Hey, let's start. Um, and we'll just start by asking questions. And I'm not sure what's going on somewhere. I know I ask a couple people to make sure they ask questions. Make sure that happens. Anything else? Two. Yes. Can we do two? Two. Yes. Okay. Uh, Why did you ask me to do this problem? Well, I thought I it would simplify down to the side, but okay. 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 So you felt like you could do this. That makes and get negative five, right? Okay. Negative five over one. Okay. Now, remember, let, let's take an example like fifteen over twenty-seven. That can be simplified. Why? Yeah. They're mm -hmm. both divisible by three. Okay, both divisible by three, absolutely right. I'm gonna say it slightly differently. They both have a common factor of three. It means the same thing, right? But it's, if you, if you think about it, uh, we can break down arithmetic really to addition and multiplication, okay? And uh, using those two, we can kind of define things really well. So if I wanna say that I can cancel a three out, what I'm really saying is they have a common factor of three, Three times five, this is three times nine. Okay, what's really happening here is I have three thirds times uh, five ninths. I can write it as a product of two fractions, and I get three divided by three, it's just one. Right? It's not magic, not just because I put a line through it, it works, but because three divides three, it makes one, and now we just have one times five ninths is five ninths. Right? So I call your attention to that again because if we're going to cancel, let's say, a 3x, it has to be possible to do something just like this. Okay? If I want to cancel a 3, I need to be able to write it as 3 over 3 times some other factor. So let's try that over here. We have to be able to write it as 3x over 3x times some other fraction. And if we can do that, then we can take 3x divided 3x and have 1 and 1 times the new fraction and it's it. Right? So let's see if we can do that. Let's do the denominator because that's going to be simple. 3x times. 1 will give us 3x. Remembering that when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. Now here's the thing, what would we have to multiply 3x by? Remembering that we have to distribute, remember the distributive property, okay? What would we have to multiply it by to get, well, let's just start with 3x. What would we have to multiply it by to get 3x? So 1, 1. Okay, but now what do we have to get? Negative 5. How are we gonna multiply 3x times something and get negative 5? Okay, we're not. Okay. Or if we did, the thing that we would use would be more complicated and not simpler, okay? Uh, so we could say it in a couple ways. We could kind of claim ignorance and say, well, there is nothing. There's nothing that we can put there that we can multiply 3x by to get 5, right? Because there's an x there. How do I carry over an x, multiply by an x, and then wind up not having it? Anybody think of something that I could multiply by? It's just not a very good looking thing that I could multiply by that would wind up giving me a negative five. What's that? Three X over negative five. Um almost there, but three X over negative five. If I were to multiply that by three X, that would multiply three X and get nine X squared over negative five. But if I flip it over. Negative five over three x. Okay, so now I have three x over one. This is just me distributing the three x to here. I have negative five over three x. Right, cross cancellation, and we get negative five. What's the problem? I mean, this would be our new fraction. How's that look? Yeah, this, this what we call this already in simple form. This is not very simple. Okay. And if you want to have like kind of a definition of what's simple, imagine you're going to plug a number in for x and think about which one would you rather plug something in for x and then like actually figure out what that number is. If you did it here, not a big deal. Multiply by 3, subtract 5, multiply by 3, and okay, there's a fraction. Here, we're going to plug in something for x. This is a fraction. Find a common denominator. Put those together. Divide it by 1. That's not too bad if you divide by 1, but if you're dividing by anything else, now you, you know, 
becomes this big to do. All right. Does that help, Abby? Did that this all locked away in our mind really well? Uh, if we want to cancel something out, we have to be able to write it as the thing we want to cancel out over itself times the simpler form. Any other questions? We go back, take a look, see if there's any questions. Um, number two of the like the last set. The, this one? Uh, no. This one. Yeah. Okay. Um, got the steps there. We'll just run through them in real time. So let's talk about it. I was going to talk more about it after everything, but it's important to talk about it now. What is up with the order of operations? Why do we use PEMDAS? What does PEMDAS actually do? <coughs> Why do we have an order of operations? What would we need if we didn't have this order of operations? What would we then be using? Just, uh, just right. You just do it in order. Yeah, I guess if we didn't have an order, uh, an agreed upon order, then we would just, it would be, man, everybody would just be doing it however they want. Left to right seems logical. So there's not an agreed upon order and it's just kind of madness out there. But if we didn't have, we do have an agreed upon order. If we didn't, then, then that could happen. So let's say that I did want you to do things in a certain order, but there isn't uh, a, an agreed upon order. What would I have to use? Like parentheses. Yes, like lots and lots of parentheses. Do you remember? Uh, let me just bring this slide up before we do this uh, here. Why aren't you cooperating? There we go. Right. So remember we watched this video and he wrote all these parentheses that would be necessary if we didn't have this agreed upon MDAS order or BIDMAS or PEDMAS or in, however, you, you, you can hear lots of different uh, initializations um, of the order of operations, but if we didn't have one, we would just have to use parentheses. And this here, with all these parentheses, there's no way to do the wrong thing because it tells you exactly what to do at what time, right? I mean, that's what's great about the parentheses. I would have to do 18 divided by three. It groups those two numbers and it tells me exactly to do those first. I have to do four times five because the parentheses are round four times five. And then I would have two numbers, I would have to do that, that subtraction. There's no other way to get confused, okay? Then I would have a number here, three plus that number. Okay, and then with that, I would have to do one plus two inside those parentheses before I added it. So I'd have one plus two plus this new number, and there's just no way to mess up the order. Dustin, did you have something to number Okay. So, if we just use parentheses, lots and lots of them, then we could be sure that everybody would do everything in the right order, the way that we intended as authors of an expression. Okay, but let's take having an order of operations allows us to get rid of these parentheses to a certain extent. Right? We still use parentheses, but we get rid of a lot of them by saying, if you see multiplication and addition, do the multiplication. Okay. Same goes for division. You see division, multiplication, division, and, and adi division and addition, or division and subtraction. Do the division first. Okay. So let's look at all the multiplication pairs, and we'll just say, you know what? If you see a multiplication pair, multiply that pair together before you do any other pairs of numbers. So, so we'll just kind of get rid of these parentheses. Okay. That four times five, that's going to go first. Okay. So we don't have to worry about that. Also, we just talked about division. Do division, and at the same time as multiplication, and don't do addition or subtraction before that. So we can get rid of these parentheses. But they're still, remember how later in the video he said, they're still there, they're still implied, 
right? You could imagine that they were there, but with the order, you just don't actually write those things. Okay. Um, let's see. Also, let's agree that we'll do addition and subtraction from left to right. If you see addition, do that first. If you see subtraction further to the left, do some addition, do that first. Okay. So really, what I have is three plus the number that I'm going to get when I do that, minus the number that I'm going to get when I do that. So I can really just get rid of these parentheses. Okay. I don't need to group those together. When we agree to do multiplication and division first, that makes sure I do these first. And I don't need parentheses around that. I just go from left to right when I do addition. Okay. Uh, the, the same thing is, is true here. There's this addition and this subtraction. There's addition there that I'm going to add to this number. I don't need these parentheses. I just do addition and subtraction from left to right. Okay. And again, this is addition. Tell, tell me this addition first, then this addition, then this addition, then this subtraction. I don't need to be told to do that first. I just do it from left to right. That won't change anything as long as we agree on that. And now I just have parentheses around this big whole thing, so that's not really necessary. So that's all the order of operations it does. It allows us to not write so many parentheses. That's all it is. Okay, so let's go back to the problem we were just about to do and say, if we didn't have an order of operations, I would have to use a lot more parentheses to make sure you do it in exactly the order that I want. But since we do have an order, agreed upon order of operations, you know that one of the things that I want you to do first is multiply this seven times two before you add this two to some other stuff. Right, so the first thing that I want you to do is take care of uh, anything that's in parentheses, whatever you can do there, uh, and then exponents, there's no exponents, and multiplication division. So I, I guess we could, I mean, parentheses does come first, but that means I can't multiply this seven times two? No, that doesn't really affect me. Okay, so this is 14 plus, I'll make sure to take care of these parentheses first, plus three times three, okay? And then there's divide by four times two, Okay, uh, let's see, well, I can't really do anything with this 14 plus until I have a number to add to it, so we'll work on this parentheses. Um, should I add seven plus three? No, or three times three? Three times three. Times three. Because it's right? No, it's not because it's right. It's because we have this order, this agreed upon order of operations. And before addition, we just agree to multiply. Okay, it's just a gentleman's agreement. Why we should do it that way, except that that's what we want to do. And this should be plus. Okay. Now, should I do four, should I like add these together? Do 14 plus, what is it, 16? 14 plus 16? Yeah. Let's see, let's, let's just write this as 16, see what we think. 14 plus 16 divided by 4 times 2. Now, what do you think? 16 divided by 4. Oh, let's see. Should I add first? No, there's some division to do. This 16 belongs to this division, not to this addition, because division comes before addition. Because it's the right thing to do, and adding first is the wrong thing to do? No, because it's just the order that we agreed on. Right? There could be some other planet somewhere with aliens who's, who've agreed to do addition first. Right? Everybody just agrees to do addition first, and then multiplication. It could be anything you want. We agree multiplication and division before addition. So 14 plus 16 divided by 4, because we do a multiplication division from left to right. 16 divided by 4 is 4. We multiply that by 2. Still, this is being multiplied by 2, so we're going to do that first. 8, 14, 22. Okay. You see what I'm trying to get through to you, trying to impress upon you, is that I don't like when people feel like they're wrong or right because of some rule that is just agreed upon. Okay? It's not the right way to do it, it's just agreed upon order to do it. And we'll do it that way because, through my research, most people do it in that order. I think over in, in Europe, a lot of times, they will do multiplication uh, first, like above division every time. Even if there's some division that's to the left of multiplication, they always do multiplication. It's more prevalent in Europe that they do that. There's no reason why they couldn't. That's just what that's what their language in math is. That they decided. Right? So, 
Any questions? Any more questions about the homework at all? Is this good? Is that Ezra? Makes sense. I can't take the points out the battery. Like, what's his name over here? What's his name? Richard. I learned it. Mitchell, you knew that. You're a little poo face. Okay. Did you call them poo face? Oh, that would be so appropriate. That's what I call my girls. Poo face. They're learning. They're learning. Um. Now, let me just go back real quick to, to this guy here. There's certainly lots of different ways to simplify algebraic expressions. And there are certainly lots of ways that, of course, are correct. It's just that this way is the simplest way that I can be sure you're asking yourself, is this a factor of the numerator? Is this a factor of the denominator? When we force ourselves to multiply by the thing we want to cancel, now we're really getting at truth. Math, right? It doesn't sound too like, philosophical in a math class, but that's, that's the way that I can be sure that you're asking yourself the right question. Um, any other questions? That don't work at all. What we're about to do in a couple of minutes is we're going to have everything put away and we're going to take a quiz. I put, a, I put parentheses around quiz to try and eliminate any kind of stigma that the word quiz has in your mind. It's not a quiz that it should be scary or anything. It's really just a tool for you and for me to know what you know. Right. So if you have no questions on the homework, what, you should, what that communicates is, I feel ready. I feel like I can simplify rational expressions. I feel like I can do the order of operations correctly. I feel like I can uh, add multiplied by fractions. I can do all of these things without a problem. And I'm ready to show you that that's the case. Okay? So is that true? Do you guys feel like you're ready to show me that's the case? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, I should have said this earlier. It'll be a habit soon. But if you don't have your homework today, you need to have a pink slip. We're about to turn in homework. So have a pink slip. If you don't have your homework, make sure that you do. So if you don't have your homework, go ahead and grab a pink slip from back there. Fill it out. Otherwise, let's pass in our homework. For number one, which I'll try and just work out right here, I just have to ask myself first, do I feel like there's something that should cancel out? All right. And what do you think? Can it be simplified? Can it not be simplified? What's our first instinct? Yeah. It can't. OK, we did it can. Feel like it can be simplified. Maybe you feel like an x squared can be crossed out like this, but that's that's going to turn out to be a mistake. Okay, and I'll show you why. Again, as we worked out from the homework, if I can cancel out an x squared, I have to be able to. I don't have to do it this way. But if you're still having trouble, like if you get this one wrong on on this review, maybe you should do it the way I'm about to do it for a while until you get the hang of it. If I can cross out an x squared, it's because x squared is a factor of the numerator. That means that I can multiply x squared by something and get the numerator. Same for the denominator. I can multiply x squared by something and get the denominator. Let's start with the denominator. Can I multiply this x squared by something and get x squared? One. Yeah. One. Looking good. All right, x squared. I know a little something about distribution. I know that I'm going to have to distribute the x squared across everything I see in this numerator. So x squared times what is x squared? One. One, good. x squared times what is 4x? Yes, one. exactly. That sound right, is, is what we think. How do I do that? How do I multiply by, by two factors of x, x times x, and then all of a sudden lose an x? And then we have one factor of x. It's possible, but again, it won't be any simpler than this. Okay, Just to give you the suspense. We'd have to multiply by 4 over x to get that. That x would cancel one of these x's, and then we'd have 4x. But that's not simpler than how it started. Okay? So either there should be, uh, like, can't be simplified, uh, not possible, no big x through it, some kind of indication they're aware that this can't be done. Okay? Yes? What if instead of taking 
both x's out at the same time, you only took one away? That's a great question. Let's try that out. So you just cancel out one factor of x. So we've got to start over here. Okay, true. All right. So it's still the same has to be true. We have to be able to do this x over x times some other fraction uses this guy. OK, so what would we multiply the denominator? Okay, x, OK. x times what to get the x squared? X. Again, x. x times what to get 4x? Four, 4. That's better. That's, this is looking better, right? So x times something now has to equal 1, though. Right? Now we have to get that 1. How do we get the 1? We have to use 1 over x, and that's not prettier. We want it to be prettier. That's a great question. Great question. You should ask that. Well, not x squared, maybe just x. Okay. But then again, you have to be able to do what we just tried to do here. So let's just put a big note there. All right, this guy here. Let's start with what do you feel like can cancel? A three. A three. A three. X. And an x. Yeah. That's true. If we can cancel a three x, then we should be able to write it as. 3x over 3x times some other fraction gives us this fraction. When I multiply these together, we need to get this. All right, 3x times what is 9x? 9x. 9x. 3x. 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 3x.
right? No, because they agreed to. They just agreed to. So six plus four in these parentheses, you got a minus seven, you got a five minus that thing, plus one, you're gonna divide by eight at some point, times four plus seven, and you get a two. Uh, can we do this negative six times three? Remember that the, that the sign should follow the, the number around, right? If there's a negative there, we should have negative six times three and get negative 18. Okay, what can we do next? Just have like a seven. So we should probably add the four and the six. Add the four and the six, okay. So we got the five minus, the four and the six is 10. That's seven times 10, eight times four, seven, Eight there, two, all right, 18. Now what? Seven times 10. Seven times 10, we got that multiplication first. Okay, so we got 70, that's five minus 70 plus one, divided by eight. 18 out here, negative 18. Four plus seven. All right, what next? Jethro? <coughs> Five minus seventy, and you know you do plus one all at the same time, right? So six minus seventy. You can add the five and the one, right? This is called the, the uh, commuted property of addition. So five plus one is six. Six minus seventy, <coughs> negative sixty-four. Sixty-four. Okay, we got eighteen out here. It's negative two times four plus seven. Bring this up here. Now what? Negative eighteen. That's going to be a positive number, right? So 2 plus this number, which is, what is 18 times 64? Uh, 1,100. So. 1,100. What? I don't know. I don't have that multiplication fact memorized. So I have to get a calculator, which I don't have. Uh, oh, negative. Oh, 1, 152. 152 is positive because it's negative times negative. Right? So we got a positive, then divide by 8, and then times 4 and plus 7. What's next? Divide. Divide for our agreement. We 144. 144 times 4. Multiplication, all right? 576. 576. 576. And now we're just going to add. Five eighty three five eighty five. Am I right? I'm wrong. No, I'm right. Okay. All right. So remember to give them out, uh, every problem, not just the whole quiz. Every problem out of five. So give them a score out of five on each problem, yes? Well, if they have it wrong and there's no word. Is blank? Yeah. Oh, wrong and no word. Yeah, so zero. That's a zero, because it's not correct, and I have no idea how you got there. It could have been a total guess. Right? I'm guessing it's not there. Where's that? Let's talk real quick about the distributive property, and I just want you to see uh, why multiplication distributes across addition. I'll use a little picture to do that. Right, so here we are. We are in class. It's, it's notes time if you're a notes taker, uh, but I won't be telling you that every day. So, so where is, as you move through, this is how the structure class goes. Right after the quiz, we're in the class. All right, so 3 plus 4 times 5 is the same as 3 times 5 plus 4 times 5. Okay? And the same applies if there's variables in there. Of course, that's in the algebra. We're going to see a lot of variables. Let's see why that is. Why does 5 get multiplied by 3 and 4? And it kind of seems pretty amazing that it comes out to be the same as if I did 3 plus 4 and then multiply it by 5. Let's use a, uh, a picture to, to, uh, to show you this. First of all, I'm going to establish that we can use uh, the picture of a rectangle to show multiplication. Okay, so let's start with a simple multiplication problem like 2 times 3. I'm going to show you with a rectangle how we can represent 2 times 3. Or does anybody have a guess how that could be shown? Yeah? 2 by 3 
basically a rectangle. A two by three rectangle. There's something about this rectangle that is two times three. If this side is two and this side is three, what about this rectangle is six? The area. The area. The area, right? the area is six. And if you've never thought about it, if you've never pictured the area, you really should. This side is three, and this side is two. Okay. So on this side we have like two blocks, two squares, all right? And we're going to extend those along this side, which is three. So we have two by three is six. Two times three is six. Okay. Now we're going to make another rectangle that will show how the distributive, pro distributive property will prove that it's true. So we've got three plus four times five, just like here we had two times three. Okay. Three plus four is one side of the rectangle, five is the other side of the rectangle. Three, all right, let's do three. And then four, three and four, okay. This is four, this is three. Of course, we can add four plus three and get seven. That's what this did. This approach was add them, get seven times five. And we're going to do this side. One, two, three, four, five. And here's our rectangle. Look, this side is what we're multiplying by. We're going to multiply five by three plus four. Look how five will need to get multiplied by four and by three, and if we add those together, we get the area of the rectangle. Just like if we did five times seven. Okay? So we have to do, we're going to have a rectangle that has an area of five times four. Okay. Each one of these is worth five. Okay. We have to have a rectangle, a rectangle of five times four. There's the first, well, I guess the second part of this distribution. We also have to have a rectangle of three times five. So we have four times five and three times five. There, there. What would we do to find the area of the whole thing? We would take this area plus this area. So we have four times five plus three times five. Okay. And I'm sure you've seen this before, so just really quickly I'll show you something like uh, three times x plus two. Now we have this x. It could be anything. It could be really big. It could be really small. It could be anything. We don't know what it is. Okay. So what I'll do here is I'll have a 3. Right. Here I'll do, I'll put 2 here. Okay. So here is a box that's uh, 3 by 2. But this side needs to be 2 plus x. Okay, how big is x? I don't know. I'm just going to kind of have to make it up. So I'll say that this much is x. Okay. So this is 2. This, we're just going to call it x. I could have picked any length at all, but I just have to kind of use my imagination to imagine this length is just anything, anything that x could be. It doesn't matter how, how short it is or how long it is. It represents some unknown length, OK? So I'm just not going to, I'm not going to mark it off, OK? Does that make sense? Richard? Yeah. Make sense? Kind of. Kind of. I don't know. All right. Kind of like the Calvin Hobbes thing to me. I don't know. What do you mean? Uh, one where it's just like, I don't know. It's kind of really cute. Yeah. Did you get this? Yeah. 3 plus 4, right? That's 3 plus 4. So this side is like 3 plus 4, except for it's x plus 2. OK. Now, what's the area of this rectangle? 6. 6. 3 times 2. Okay, so there's a, a 6. Now, how big is the area of this? Yeah, it's 3 times x, right? Length times width, base times height, however you want to think of it. It's just 3, this side 3, times whatever x is. I can't really mark it off in squares because I don't know how big x is. That area, whatever it is, whatever x is, that area is 3 times that x. So we add 3x. There's that 3 times x. 
Have you guys ever seen this before? Has anybody ever drawn this out for you in algebra or pre algebra, geometry? I don't like that. So, uh, in my algebra so class, when we learn distribution, this is what we're going to be looking at because we can actually see it. It's physical, it's tangible. We can cut it out and, and have pieces of paper that actually are the correct sizes and show this multiplication in a way that we can touch. Now, I don't imagine that you guys make very many mistakes when you're distributing, so it's not that um, I think you need it proved to you so that you can do it correctly, but it establishes something when we go to multiply things called uh, polynomials by other polynomials. We can come back to this, and it will all make a lot more sense. Okay. So there's distribution. Is there, uh, how many of you feel like this makes sense? Like, Four out of five cents at least. Okay. For anybody who doesn't feel like that, can you put like the, the, that, the gap between where you are and, and fully understanding it? Like, can you put a question to it? Can you ask a question that if I could answer that question, it would clarify it. more clarification just ask me later or maybe the next time we I show you this it'll just it'll meet you on a better day and, and you'll get it. Right. That is a nice little picture, a nice little illustration of what uh, multi uh, what uh, distribution is. Okay. So now let's talk about what an algebraic expression is. What is an algebraic expression? What makes algebra algebra? Can we talk about this, Jethro? Um, I know that algebra is different ways of solving when we call something x, we let it have a name, and we just say, okay, let's put aside that x as the thing we don't know. That's what makes algebra algebra. Using letters to represent numbers is algebra. Okay. Um, so if we want to say something like some number, instead of saying some number, we'll use a letter. And if I want to say some number plus 5, then that would be n plus 5 or a plus five, or any letter plus five. Okay. There's an algebraic expression. An expression you can think of as uh, you know, some collection of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division of numbers. That's an expression. This is algebraic because I have a variable in it. Okay. And then we can represent real life situations like I have three times as much money as somebody else does. Okay. How would I represent that situation. I have three times as much money as somebody else does. Do you know how much money they have? No. no. So how do I represent that situation with an algebraic expression? Maybe three times x. Three times some unknown value, the amount of money somebody else has. Three times x. So if we're doing, say, like a word problem, we're looking for things that talk about some unknown quantity that we, we don't know what it is, but stuff that we know about. We know some known quantity uh, is three times bigger than some other number, or uh, whatever that language is, we're going to put that together into an algebraic expression. Okay. <clears throat> and as practice in the, uh, in the homework, there's some pretty simple uh, algebraic expressions that I want you to write. Like, um, let's say Nathan has Let's just say is four times as old as Oliver. I don't know who Oliver is. He's not four times older than anybody in this room. I don't know if he has a little brother that's four times older than. But somebody in the, in the world named Oliver and is four times older than that person. So can you represent this expression, this wordage? Yeah. We don't know what Oliver's age is, so it's x. So it's called x. Four. And he is four times as old as this kid Oliver, so we take Oliver's age, x, and multiply it by four. There you go. So, that. so as we work our way through 
word problems and threaded word problems. Look for things like this. I'm not going to say look for magic words and of uh, means to do this thing and is means to do this thing. Just look at the situation. Give it some thought. What unknown value do I have? How, are, how am I going to interact with that unknown value? Okay. And in the homework, the, the pretty simple algebraic expression is just like this. Okay. So I'm going to write now just a nonsense algebraic expression. Just pulling it out of my imagination. Uh, it's not going to mean anything. But then we're going to talk about its parts. So if you like 3x squared plus 5x, I just want to do some vocab. Okay, simple vocab. boxes around those things. Those th two things are the same kind of thing. Can you tell me what the name for those things are? Coefficient coefficients. Coefficients is the, is the, the number, the like real number, not unknown value. It's multiplied by a variable. guys understood that this like plus a negative one. Right? So what are all like everything basically separated by addition or subtraction? Well really addition because we want to include the negative as part of this guy. You know what those are called? Like each one of those is individually called a a term. Okay. That's the word for it. And I want us to be able to talk about those words. So those are terms. terms and this one would be for constant term. I'm not really going to quiz you on this or try and test you and make sure you know this thing, but when I say this term and that term and let's talk about the different terms and which ones are like terms and which ones aren't like terms, especially the word terms I want you to be familiar with, and coefficients. When I talk about coefficients and we go down the road and we talk about uh, rational functions and I want to talk about the leading coefficients, the ratio of the leading coefficients of, this, of these two polynomials, like you should know what all these words mean. If the words, you don't even know what they mean, it's going to be more confusing. So I'm just going to define all that stuff. And of course, x is called a variable. If I were to add 2x plus 3x squared, what would that be? That's what you normally write the x squared first, though? What we normally do, sure. You could. You don't have to. What you normally do. But it doesn't change anything. Add 2x plus 3x squared? Can I simplify this at all? Okay, you can take an x. You can do what? You can take an x out. But no, you can't. Well, I guess you could take an x outside of parentheses and put 2 plus 3x. You can distribute the x using your distributive property. You could. I, I don't know. You could make an argument that that's simpler. I don't know if I think it's simpler, but I guess what I'm trying to see is is anybody going to try and add it and get 5 something? If you do feel like getting five of something, I'm going to say this is similar to needing common denominators in that we're, you're trying to add together two things that are very different. Okay? This is an x, and this is x times x. This is quite a bit bigger than just x, right? This is x times itself. If this is a three, and this is a nine. If this is a five, then this is a 25. Okay? So we're going to have two, say, 
fives, because that was a five. And here I would have three twenty fives. So I typically add them together and say that I have five. Right? Three plus two is five. Five what? Five fives? Five twenty fives? No. So if the two wasn't there, uh, then is it possible? Like just x plus three x squared? Yeah, just one again, one x. What do you think? If we just have a 1x plus 3x squared, are these like terms? Can I put them together? Just add them together? It would be, this is a, a common thing, like, a, well, 4, I guess. 4x to the third? What does x to the third mean? x cubed means x times x times x, right? What we've essentially done is like taken addition, turn it into multiplication. That's really ample. That would just really escalated quickly. Okay. Here we're adding an x to two factors of x, x plus x times x, and turn it into somehow x times x times x. Okay. And think about that. When you when you're gonna add x plus x squared, it doesn't equal x to the third. Because this would mean x times x times x. This would mean x times x plus x. But over here, we're multiplying that third x. That doesn't, that doesn't compute. Okay. So, uh, what do we call, like, could I add these together? Yeah. 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 What do we call those things? Because they're able to be added together. Like terms. Like terms. We call them like terms. Why are they like terms? Essentially because they are the same kind of thing. Just like with fractions. We can add fractions together when they're the same kind of thing, when they are the same size pieces. Here we can add these together if they're the same kind of thing. This is a number of x squared. This is also a number of x squared. We've got apples and apples. We add apples to apples. We have some more apples. But here we try to add apples to oranges. They don't go together. They don't collect. Can't collect apples and oranges together and say we have apple oranges. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. Genetically modified apples. What's that? Genetically modified apples. Yeah. We could do that, but then we can't just do it just because they're in the same place at the same time. Yeah. Um, let's see. Getting pushed here. So. Um, got a few more minutes. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take, I'm going to write another nonsense, nonsense expression. x squared plus 5x minus 7. I'm going to ask you to evaluate for x equals uh, negative 3. Okay. Evaluate for x equals negative 3. And I'm going to hope that makes more sense. It just means plug in negative 3 for x. Okay. But the math speak is evaluate. If you were to evaluate a situation, just kind of look around and make sense of it all. It's kind of the same thing here. Evaluate and just kind of, oh, this three goes with that six, and we add them together, and we multiply these, and we kind of condense it down into one thing. Or we do a match. What's that? Substituting something in for x is going to explain what graphs are. They're going to be so much simpler than probably you've ever seen them. Okay? But just real quickly, I'm just going to evaluate this for negative 3. You can check, make sure you did it correctly. I always put parentheses wherever x's are, and then I replace exactly what that number is. <coughs> I want to multiply two numbers together. Those two numbers are negative 3 and negative 3. plus a negative 15. And so I have a positive 9 times 3, that's 27, minus 15 equals so that's minus 12. 17. What did I do? Minus oh, minus. Minus. Plus, oh. plus. Have a good day. Minus 15, minus 7, so we're at 12. We're going to go down to 5. Why? Because it's negative. Damn. 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 Damn.